Hey there, storytellers, and welcome back to my channel. As you can see from the title and this monstrosity next to me here, I am doing a massive, and I do mean massive, book haul because this isn't even, I, I can't get them all in the shot. There's two more piles <laughs> over here, there's more you can't see, and there's some audiobooks. So buckle in, get comfy. We're going to try and make this as quick as possible, but I have a lot to share. Okay, so I'm going to preface all of this by saying I've very much been looking for reads that put me in seasonal moods. I tend not to have trouble finding autumn and winter reads, but I really wanted some spring summer reads as well as more autumn winter reads because I love them. And overarchingly, I was looking to find a whole range of books. I've been feeling in a classics mood lately, so there's a good amount of those. And I'm also feeling cozy. I'm sorry, I'm just looking over like, the general theme of these books. Some of them are straight up just ones I've picked because I thought they'd be great for cozy reads, good feel good reads. I've very much been looking for those kinds because I have a lot of books on my shelf that sort of fit spooky fall winter vibes, like I said, but not always cozy fall winter vibes or even cozy spring summer vibes. So that is kind of the overarching theme of what I was looking for, but also I just kind of went nuts. So without any further ado, let's get into this. So the first one that I have to talk about, I don't really want to talk about because it was pre-ordered and I will say it was pre-ordered long before this author's drama took off and I had not read the first two books in their series which was my mistake. This is Blessed Monsters by Emily A. Duncan. And as a lot of people in the book community have seen, this author has come out as admitting to saying blatantly racist and anti-Semitic things and bullying other authors online. None of it's good. None of it I was happy to hear. I was mad I pre-ordered it. It literally arrived like a day or two before the drama went down. So now I'm stuck with a series that I don't really know what to do with because I don't really want to support that author. But in the spirit of honesty, I wanted to let you know that I did purchase that book and now it's just there. Moving on to much happier book purchases. I'm going to start with a couple that I've already talked about on this channel just because it's faster that way, so I'm going to mention them. The first one is Wild Delore, The Accidental Apprentice by Amanda Foodie. It follows a young boy named Barclay who is tossed off the path into the woods, which is the one thing his people forbid, and he bonds with a beast, and he gets shunned from his village and ends up having to go on an adventure to try to get rid of his bond with the beast, only he learns he might not actually want to do that in the first place. I have not read it yet. It is a middle grade. The next one I mentioned was World of Wonders by Amy Nizuk Matato, and this is her book of memoir essays. It's a it's a memoir basically, but it's written in really beautiful lyrical prose because she is a poet and she relates each of her personal anecdotes to an object found in nature, be it a plant or an animal. The next one you may have seen in my recent reading vlog, and that is Witches Steeped in Gold by Sienna Smart. This follows Iria and Jasmine, two witches from opposing witch orders, who end up fighting for the same goal, trying to take down the Doyen. And on the back, it says one witch left standing. This is the final copy. I was reading the arc in my reading vlog and one witch left standing, I don't think was on the back of that arc. So this is much more intense in terms of a teaser on the back, but I am almost done with this book. I'm about 200 pages out from the end and I'm loving it so far. I highly recommend. Moving on to audiobooks. The first one is Talking As Fast As I Can by Lauren Graham. And this chronicles her sort of memoirs in relation to Gilmore Girls. It's one of her most popular and well-loved roles. So she talks about her experiences filming the original show and her experiences filming A Year in the Life, the Netflix special four-episode block that they did. I am a big fan of Gilmore Girls. 
it's not without its flaws but it is a huge guilty pleasure of mine and I really loved this book. I've read it before but I saw it on sale on Audible so I just thought I'd treat myself. The next is The Mystery of Mrs. Christie by Maria Benedict and it follows the fictional account of 11 days I believe when Agatha Christie went missing and I think she gets asked to help solve a case or something if I remember correctly but basically it kind of covers those 11 days where she really did go missing and kind of wouldn't tell anybody what happened or where she was. It was very weird and this is just a fictionalized account of those days. Next I have Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi and it is about a coffee shop set in Tokyo where customers can time travel but it only lasts as long as their coffee doesn't get cold. So it kind of begs the question of if you could go back in time and interact with somebody or ask somebody a final question or have that last conversation with a loved one, it kind of answers those questions. It's a very philosophical kind of concept and I thought it was going to be really interesting and beautiful. Next, I got Consider This by Chuck Pahal Palahniuk. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He is the author of Fight Club and this is his memoirs slash writing advice book. After that I got 500 Miles From You by Jenny Colgan. This follows a girl I think named Lizzie. I'm not positive. It's uh, a girl who is a nurse and she gets sent to the Scottish Highlands in a sort of job swap with an army veteran because she has PTSD and she's too wound up so she needs to go take a mental break and work somewhere a little bit less hectic and stressful and he I guess is the one that ends up covering for her but they stay in contact like so they're always talking and it's I think it's a love story through letters is the vibe I got. Next in audiobook and physical book I have Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare and this is the second book in the Last Hours trilogy and it follows Cordelia Carstairs and company um, through London on their Shadow Hunter adventures. Then I have Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. This is a sort of Peter Pan reimagining. It follows the story of Wendy, who prior five years prior goes missing with her two brothers into the woods near where they live. And now she's back and no one knows what happens to her missing brothers. No one really believes her stories was the vibe I was getting. And she ends up sort of stumbling over this boy in the woods and Peter is someone she thought was a figment of her imagination of her stories but it turns out he is real more or less and is wanting to help her find out what happened to the missing kids. Then we have Brida by Paolo Coelho and this follows a girl named Brida who is of Irish descent and she's interested in various aspects of magic and meets different wise groups of people, wise characters who help shape her into a witch is all I really know about it. And the last audiobook I have is called On Writers and Writing by Margaret Atwood and it kind of speaks for itself. It is her memoirs and her sort of advice on writing and writers. Moving back to my physical books in no particular order, I have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children and its sequel Hollow City by Ransom Riggs and right I'm not crazy yes ransom rigs I don't know why I doubted that for a second but this follows our main character Jacob who after a family tragedy travels to Wales I believe to investigate his grandfather's past this group of characters and orphans that his grandfather wrote about in his journal I believe um and he discovers them and goes on adventure next I have be more B. How to Find Your Buzz by Allison Davies and this one I've already read. It's a sort of self-help book but mostly it's just meant to inspire you and uplift you. It gives you these inspiring facts about honeybees. It's kind of an educational book masquerading as a self-help book. You get to learn about bees and how helpful they are to the environment and the world but also how you can incorporate sort of bee philosophy into your own day-to-day -day life to improve it. Next I have Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. This is a classic well-known 
it follows our main character Catherine who goes off to North Hanger Abbey and I think starts encountering like creepy things and ghosts. All I really know is that this is Jane Austen's sort of parody of a gothic novel. Next I have Floriography, an illustrated guide to the Victorian language of flowers by Jessica Rue and it really is just that. It goes in alphabetical order, it gives the flower names, its meaning, its origin, and uh, suggestions to pair it with other flowers to sort of send a bouquet of intent. There's also recommendations for some bouquets at the end here. Next I have Mandy by Julie Andrews Edwards. Yes, Julie Andrews of the Sound of Music, of Mary Poppins, of The Princess Diaries, that Julie Andrews, the Queen Julie Andrews. But this follows the story of an orphan named Mandy who goes off into the woods and finds a cottage and kind of builds her own home there and sort of finds her place in the world. Then we have The Bake Shop at Pumpkin and Spice by Donna Kaufman and Kate Angel or Angel. And it's set in a town called Moonbright, Maine, and it's following their sort of festive Halloween parade celebrations. The whole town kind of gets in on it. I think it follows a few different characters, finding love and going through life. Very Gilmore Girls vibe. Getting a little gothic again, I have Girl in the Walls by A.J. Neuse, and this follows the story of Elise who is a girl living in a house that is also occupied by two brothers, Eddie and his unnamed brother. And basically Elise is hiding from these boys, but in plain sight kind of. And Eddie has to pretend he doesn't see her anymore. But the second his brother sees her, he's kind of forced to deal with the fact that she might actually be real and not a figment of his imagination. It seems creepy and ghostly and otherworldly. Next I have A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Stories by Charles Dickens and his collection of his Christmas works. Next I have Less Than Zero by Brett Easton Ellis who is the author of American Psycho and it is set in Los Angeles in the 1980s and it says the coolly mesmerizing novel is a raw powerful portrait of a lost generation who have experienced sex drugs and disaffection at too early an age in a world shaped by casual nihilism passivity <clears throat> and too much money in a city devoid of feeling or hope. Jumping back to some Gilmore Girl type vibes we have The City Baker's Guide to Country Living by Louise Miller and this follows our main character Olivia who goes to Vermont after having a mishap at her restaurant that she works at in Boston, kind of tarnishing her reputation as a pastry chef, I believe. And she decides to go get a job at an inn, I think, in this town. And again, just sort of small town, cozy, fall, winter vibes. I have a Christmas read, or it will be. I have Pride and Prejudice and Mistletoe by Melissa De La Cruz, and it is a reimagining, of course, of Pride and Prejudice set around the holidays, and it's sort of swapped. So Darcy Fitzwilliam is our beautiful, successful, and brilliant uh, main character, even though she's not 30 yet. And Luke Bennett is her former, I don't know if he's a former childhood friend, but he's someone she knew in her childhood from her hometown, which she kind of tries to avoid as a big wig. And he's the simple small town guy. Next, I have Beowulf, a sort of old English classic. And it is the unabridged translation of it. So it's not the poem in its old English form, but it is sort of the prose version. Next, I have The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. And I know it follows a group of animals living their life. Next, I have Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. And this follows our main character, Anne Shirley, who is an orphan who is sent to a farmhouse. I think it's the name of the house, Green Gables. And the Cuthberts, I think, are the ones who adopt her. Uh, she's worried if they're going to send her back or not at the beginning of it. I have A Room with a View by E.M. Forrester, and this follows our main character Lucy, who goes away to... She goes to Italy. I'm not sure where, but I think she goes to visit a cousin in Italy, and she leaves her sort of prim and proper Edwardian life behind and learns sort of the... how to embrace the passionate, freer side of sort of Italian living with her cousin and it's just about her time during that visit. I have Gulliver's Tra 
Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. And of course, this is a satire on society when read as an adult, but it also can be read as a sort of whimsical, silly kids book because that's how he wrote it. It's sort of meant to do the dual perspective thing. I have a bookshop or The Bookshop on the Corner by Jenny Colgan, and it follows our main character, Nina, who leaves her job behind to open a mobile bookstore where I believe she sort of plays matchmaker and matches the people of her new tiny community with perfect books for them and sort of finds her place in the world, finds her life. And quickly following that up with another Jenny Colgan book, this one is The Bookshop on the Shore. Similar in sort of concept, it follows our main character Zoe, where she goes to the banks of Loch Ness to sort of take on a new job as a nanny, I believe. And she again sort of discovers her place in the world, her voice, her meant to be kind of life. I have the second book in a series. Lockwood & Co. The Whispering Skull by Jonathan Stroud. I have the first book in the series called The Screaming Staircase. It follows our main character, I don't know his first name, Lockwood, and his friends. They have a detective agency where they solve sort of paranormal crime, I believe, is the vibe I got from the back of the first one and this one as well. Another sequel, I have The Night Country by Melissa Albert. This is a sequel to a uh, The Hazelwood. And it follows our main character, Alice, and the boy who helped her, Ellery Finch. Obviously, because I haven't read the Hazelwood, I keep wanting to say the Night Circus. Because I haven't read the Hazelwood, I don't know what happens, so I don't have any clue what happens in this one. More cozy reads! We have A Castle in the Clouds by Kirsten Gear, and this follows our main character, Sophie, who gets a job at a hotel. She's sort of tasked with keeping up with all the shenanigans of the hotel, while helping to organize the New Year's ball. Yeah, it says something about a perilous adventure. I have Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire, and all I know is this is a, a tale of the once and future Nutcracker. It is a Nutcracker retelling, a reimagining of the story, if you will. I know nothing about it other than that. Oh, part of the reason I kept thinking about the Night Circus is because of Something Wicked This Way Comes by Ray Bradbury, which is the story about two boys who get sucked into a sort of evil perilous carnival that sweeps into town in October and I think they make deals with the carnival I don't know what his official runner the owner I don't know the official guy I have To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf it is a story following a family outing to a seaside getaway um but it also sort of examines the questions of marriage and parenthood and childhood and grief and tyranny and bitterness and family and all that stuff. I can't remember if I talked about this one, but it is With You All the Way, I Can't Read, by Cynthia Hand, and it follows our main character, Ada. Basically, her life kind of gets turned on its head when she sort of tries to have that first time with her boyfriend and it doesn't go well and then she finds out he's cheated on her with somebody else and her mom's having an affair and her sister's getting involved with people all on this family vacation while she's in Hawaii and she decides you know what enough is enough I'm gonna make some change take things into my own hands and try to experience things things you know and life for the first time. <laughs> Next, I have The Enchanted April by Elizabeth von Arnhem, and it follows four different women who bond over an ad for a summer getaway in Italy. It's a house for rent, and none of them can afford it on their own, but they decide to pool their resources and have a getaway together, and basically tensions happen, but bonds are made. On the subject of Elizabeth von Arnhem, I have another book from her that I'm waiting for it to arrive and it is called Elizabeth and her German Garden and it is about our main character Elizabeth who basically does not want to do anything except sit in her garden. She loves it there. It's her escape, her oasis. She likes it kind of wild and overgrown and natural looking and that is all I really know about it. I don't know what the plot is or anything like that. I have The Globetrotter's Guide to Happiness by Kate Morgan and basically it's kind of what it sounds like. It is a guide to different practices and meditations on happiness from around the world. I think it's safe to say we're like halfway through. I have more books done than not. 
we're getting there. So I'm editing this video and it's already at like 20 minutes and I have at least 20 more of me talking about books for you guys because the haul is just that big and rather than inundate you with this massive video all at once I decided I'm going to break it into two parts so be on the lookout for part two. I think I'm going to post it before next Friday as a little bonus. Next Friday I'm definitely going to I think do my wrap up for April so I think like I said part two is just going to be a bonus video out before then be on the lookout for it if you want to keep up with me and all of my bookish adventures and I think you really should with the haul this big you can go ahead and click the subscribe button and I highly recommend that you also ring the little bell so that you don't miss any of this content that I'm throwing you away I will see you guys on the next one bye <laughs>